Uranus has a bunch of fascinating moons, many of which we've already talked about, but somehow we completely overlooked Umbriel. Among all the satellites orbiting the seventh planet, this one stands out as the darkest and most mysterious of them all. Hey everyone! What else do we actually know about this strange moon? And how did it end up looking the way it does today? Thanks for tuning in to our channel. In today's video, we are going to explore all of that and more. So let's dive right in. A Distant and Mysterious World The widely accepted theory is that Uranus was first discovered by William Herschel in 1781, but some researchers believe it may have actually been observed even earlier. On a clear night, if the seventh planet is close enough to Earth, someone with exceptionally sharp eyesight might just be able to spot it with the naked eye, even though it's very dim and hard to notice. It's even possible that the ancient Greek astronomer Hipparchus saw Uranus as early as 128 BC, and it's been mentioned in writings by astronomers from Europe, the Arab world, and China. Still, nobody actually recognized it as a planet before Herschel came along. While you might barely be able to see Uranus itself without a telescope, there's no chance of spotting its moons that way. That's why it took someone like Herschel, using the most powerful and advanced telescope of the time, to finally detect the first satellite orbiting that distant planet. He discovered Titania and Oberon, and for decades, those moons could only be seen through his telescope. So who discovered Umbriel? That's actually a pretty fascinating question. Herschel claimed to have spotted several other moons of Uranus besides Titania and Oberon, and some think Umbriel might have been one of them. But those claims are doubtful, since his descriptions don't match what we know about their appearance or orbits. Most likely, the great astronomer was tricked by some kind of optical illusion or a flaw in his telescope. Most historians agree that Umbriel was actually discovered by another well-known British astronomer, William Lassell, in 1851, at the same time he found Ariel. Just like Uranus's other moons, this one was named after a character from classic English literature taken from Alexander Pope's poem The Rape of the Lock. In fact, Uranus's moons were the first celestial objects officially named after characters who weren't from ancient mythology. Of course, when Galileo first discovered Jupiter's moons, he tried naming them after his patrons from the Medici family, but those names didn't stick. Instead, they were eventually renamed after Zeus's many lovers. Umbriel turned out to be a surprisingly fitting name, even though Lassell couldn't have known that at the time. Pope had chosen the name using the Latin root umbra, which means shadow or darkness. And it really fits, because Umbriel is the darkest of all Uranus's moons. It reflects only about 16% of the sunlight that hits it, making it roughly one and a half times darker than Ariel, which shares some similar traits. But let's not jump ahead just yet. Compared to the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus's moons are much farther away and a lot smaller, which makes them much harder to observe. Uranus doesn't have any moons close in size to Titan, Ganymede, or even our moon. That's why we didn't learn much about them until the second half of the 20th century. Out of all Uranus's moons, Umbriel is the third largest. Its diameter is around 727 miles, making it smaller than Titania and Oberon. Its twin, Ariel, is slightly smaller in size, but actually a bit more massive. Among the five large moons that are round in shape, Umbriel orbits right in the middle, with Miranda and Ariel closer to Uranus and Titania and Oberon farther out. It takes just over four Earth days for Umbriel to complete one full orbit around the planet. Like most moons, it's tidally locked, which means the same side always faces Uranus, and its rotation is synced with its orbit. As some of you might already know, Uranus is unique because it rotates sideways and almost completely tilted with its equator nearly perpendicular to the path it follows around the Sun. Since regular moons usually orbit along their planet's equator, all of Uranus's moons, including Umbriel, follow the same sideways path. That makes for some very strange seasons and lighting patterns. At the poles, there are 42 years of continuous sunlight, followed by 42 years of complete darkness. The only part of Umbriel where you might find something close to a normal day and night cycle is around the equator, 
and even then, it's not consistent. The Blue World We finally got a closer look at Umbriel thanks to Voyager 2, which passed through the Uranian system in early 1986. That was when we received the very first photos of Umbriel, and ever since then, no other spacecraft has visited any of Uranus's moons. At the time of that flyby, only Uranus's southern hemisphere was lit by the sun, and the same was true for all of its moons. That meant the entire northern half of Umbriel was cloaked in darkness and couldn't be photographed, so to this day, we can only guess what might be up there. The images we have cover about 40% of Umbriel's surface, and only about half of that was captured with good enough resolution to analyze. What we do see is a bleak, flat landscape with a dullish blue tint, and on the leading hemisphere, the surface appears faintly stained with reddish dust. That dust was probably left behind by ancient meteor impacts. Umbriel is covered with craters that are thought to be several billion years old, most of which likely formed during the so-called Late Heavy Bombardment, a period when the young planets of the solar system were still clearing out leftover debris like asteroids and comets from their orbits. The fact that Umbriel has so many craters strongly suggests that it hasn't experienced any kind of cryovolcanic activity, which is often seen on large outer solar system moons. Solid bodies located beyond the orbit of Ceres usually have thick shells of ice, and underneath that, they often hide subsurface oceans made of water mixed with salts and various organic compounds. Every so often, that water can burst out, similar to the way magma erupts from volcanoes here on Earth. But as we mentioned earlier, Umbriel doesn't show any sign of that kind of activity. That's likely why its surface is so unusually dark. For billions of years, it's been collecting dust, with no eruptions to wash or resurface it. Scientists believe Umbriel is structured like a coated nut, with a rocky core making up just under half of its diameter, surrounded by a solid icy mantle and topped off with a hardened outer shell. When a celestial body freezes all the way down to its core and its mantle solidifies, that condition is known as geological death. Eventually, every rocky planet and moon, including Earth, is expected to reach this final stage. In theory, the speed at which a body cools and dies geologically depends on its mass. The smaller it is, the faster that death comes. And since Umbriel is relatively small and light, it's no surprise that it has already frozen solid. Still, this raises a problem. First, if Umbriel ever had a subsurface ocean like many other icy moons, we should be able to see signs that large asteroid impacts caused some of that water to erupt onto the surface. But so far, there's no evidence of that. Second, there are smaller and lighter bodies than Umbriel, like Ceres, that still show signs of cryovolcanic activity. That means they're still alive, geologically speaking. So why did Umbriel shut down so early? That remains a mystery. This dim and mysterious moon of Uranus still holds many secrets, quietly waiting for the day we finally uncover them. Sadly, we won't be learning much more unless we send a powerful deep space probe like New Horizons, which gave us so much incredible information about Pluto. But up to now, no such mission has ever been sent to the Uranian system. If that ever changes, and we finally manage to solve even a few of Umbriel's puzzles, we'll be sure to share it with you. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on social media and don't forget to click that like button to support our work. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.